Now I'm nervous. Why? Don't do this to the pro. I'm the pro. <laughs> All right. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Feng Shui Podcast with me, El Jong. Uh, and today we have a very, very special guest. All right. So it's going to be, it's, it's a weird one, right? So I bring friends and acquaintances onto the pod, talk to them about their uh, artistry and their process of creativity. Um, but uh, this new muse that we have today, we have interacted or we met because of very, very special circumstances. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you got me drunk. <laughs> yes. No, so um, our special guest for today is Miss Jenna Kosowski. Um, among other things, we'll, we'll dive deep into. So uh, Jenna is an artist, actress, model, uh, beverage slinger. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, I think this, the thing that I wanted to start off with, just on a fun note, is you don't drink. I don't drink. And you're a bartender. I am. Please explain. I quit drinking when I was really young, and um, I started bartending. I had already been bartending, and I took some time away, and then I went back to it and found that I could do it without drinking. And so I just kept doing it as a way to make money. How how would how does your uh, recommendations work now that you haven't tasted some of these drinks yourself? I have other people taste them or bartending is also a science mm-hmm. in a way. Uh, a lot of the drinks are, they follow the same pattern of ingredients and pours. Yeah. So once you know how to make a few drinks, kind of you know how to make them all in a way with slight variations. So usually I don't miss. But if something's super off, someone will tell me. But yeah. generally it's not. That, um, <laughs> yeah, the, there's there's uh, uh, ingredients, there's uh, instructions on how to make certain cocktails. There's descriptions on how drinks are right now. So it is just for me fascinating that you know this isn't the first bartender that I know that doesn't drink. Mm-hmm. Also, it's very common. Now. It's common now, which is it's good because it means that uh, you know I guess like as a bar owner, you know that they're going to be they're not going to be high on their own supply. Yes, they will be counting the money correctly. Usually, usually. <laughs> well. Yeah, Usually, uh, but also uh, you, you're always clear headed, you know, uh, whenever you're on shift. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's the other thing, too. I also have a couple of friends that are tattooists with no tattoos. That's fascinating. Right. So it's it's, huh. you know, again, it's about skill uh, and you, you don't have to like, yeah, it's it's a little bit different on tattooing because you can you have a portfolio to show. But if you're a bartender that doesn't drink. You know, but I was like, what happened? What was the reason? I mean, when I'm creating a drink, I will just have other people taste it and tell me what they think. Is it too sweet? Is it too this? But that's, again, that's that's just like the the fun. I think first few conversations that we have was uh, at the bar, (laughs) me drinking, eating my hot dog late at night. Uh, Occasionally, people will like, shot, and say, I don't drink. And then, what? That is dope. And that's where our conversation started. And then now we realize, like, not only are you, uh, you know, a delightful bartender, a staple in the neighborhood, a neighborhood favorite <laughs> at Irondack uh, in Windsor Terrace. Do you have any other places that you bartend at? I bartended a few bars in Brooklyn, mainly the Adirondack. Yeah. But there's Someday Bar, there's Brazen Head, there's the Barlow. Yeah, so if, if you need uh, a, a clear-headed drink to get onto your table... <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's what uh, um, uh, Jenna does. But it, uh, during the course of our other conversations, we realize you're, you're also in the creative and the arts business. So yeah. apart from the bartending, who is Jenna Kosowski? An actor. Oh, an actor. M- mainly. Yeah. Very cliche actor, bartender, but I am an actor. Uh, and then in addition to bartending, uh, on the side of my acting, I also do modeling for art classes Mm -hmm. and that's one of the kind of like the staples of um you know my conversations with other uh industry professionals in this podcast is like you know being a creative is rough oh yeah you know 90 percent of the people that say like i'm an 
actor. I am an artist. I'm a painter. I'm a photographer. Press them a little bit more. Like a majority of their hours during the weeks for for bills is from something else. So yours is, uh, you know, tangentially the art modeling mm-hmm. and then also bartending, bartending, right? So what uh, what drove you to be an actor first? Like what is uh, the inciting moment and say like, yeah, this is like a career that I want to pursue. I I started acting when I was ten in a class, and I took it really seriously like really seriously. I was very professional about it. I wanted to get it right. I wanted to be like the most honest and figure out the characters and stuff. And I just felt you went method at 10 years old. Yep. Uh, (laughs) No, I just I found it really fascinating. And I, I was really interested in continuing to do it. And it wasn't until I was a late teenager that I thought maybe I would try to do it forever. Mm -hmm. And and study it. You've studied it, you've been doing it. Let's talk a little bit more like the, the positive stuff. So what are some of the successes that you've had with like acting first? Like any fun projects that you've been proud to be part of, uh, you know, things that, you know, uh, bookings that you've, you've uh, particularly enjoyed? Yeah, I've done some regional theater shows that were really beautiful yeah. uh, with casts that were mm-hmm. amazing, with directors who were great. Uh, and that's been fun. That's been like bucket list items. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then for the film world, I've been able to work on a lot of really weird indie short films that oh. are a little horror, a little thriller, uh, and super dramatic. Yeah. Um, and the people I got to work with on those films are awesome. And awesome. They're, they're usually really young, really new writers, really new directors, uh, just sort of putting their all into a project and it's a passion project for them and mm-hmm. I love working on that stuff. And that's something that, you know, I'm not the one to yuck anybody, Sam. I, I want everybody to pursue their dreams, but whenever they see their favorite theater actor, their favorite film actor, you know, that's the 0.5% of the 1%. Like a, a huge majority of what acting will be like, what you mentioned, re- regional theater, you know, small uh, small projects like that. Um, what is your goal? What is what is kind of the the mountain that you're trying to surmount in terms of your acting? Working consistently and being able to make a living at it would be awesome. Uh, but mainly getting to do getting to do projects that I love mm-hmm. and that push me. I usually don't take on something unless I feel challenged and a little scared by it anyways. Awesome. Jumping in feels scary and not easy. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to work on bigger budget films oh. and I'd love to work in TV. No. Uh, and I'd love to keep working in theater in addition to that. So there's, there's theater, there's film, there's TV. There is some sort of pie that the the preference would 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 lay at right so yeah how would you kind of like prioritize your, those particular fields in terms of what your career wants to be i mean right now i'm looking for any work i can get mm. but i think it depends on if you're talking artistically mm. or if you're talking monetarily and sometimes it could be both both yeah but i would say TV, well, it used to be, it's a little different with the streaming model, but TV used to be where you could make the most money That's if right. you had consistent work in TV. And then uh, especially indie film mm-hmm. and theater was where you could potentially have the most artistry in a way. Uh, there's more rehearsal process for theater. It's more of like a bonding cast situation. It's also, there's the energy with the audience that you don't usually mm-hmm. get on film, but you don't get that. Yeah on film uh but film also speaks to me in a different way because it's so intimate and nuanced and the things that i get to do on it i don't it's not the same on stage so i can't pick a favorite genre or favorite medium i just just sort of love working saying find the project that that speaks to you yeah i love working on projects that where the writers have something really interesting to say or they uh are saying something in a way I haven't heard before. 
Um, usually if I find a project that's talking about usually something dramatic, I like comedy too, but, um, the last, one of the last films I did was about, uh, someone's experience with PTSD and I was obsessed with Mm -hmm. that and I reached out and wanted to be a part of it and that type of thing. Or if, if it's personal, if it, if it means a lot to the creator and it means a lot to me and I want to be a part of it. And here's something that I've always wanted to ask, you know, people in the industry, in the field, because everybody wants to be, you know, what you mentioned, a consistently working actor, right? Whether it's whatever field, film, TV, or, 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 or theater. But what is, what, what would be an average consistent full-time actor life would look like? I've heard if I mm-hmm. can have X number of episodes as an X, like, you know, either like a, uh, you know, glass in the call sheet or if if uh so one of my closest friend was a professional extra so but the show was um uh orange is the new black Mm -hmm. so it's they have to be that same number of pool of extras for x number of years so it's more of like oh i can if i can do this for for three months a year or two months a year is theater i have no idea how these types of 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 freelance things work is it the number of projects it's the number of titles is it the length of time that you'll be there i think it's different for everyone because for tv i think the end goal for a lot of people is to get up to series regular levels where you're on a show and the show lasts a few years hopefully and you're a regular and you're just brought back mm-hmm. for episode after episode after episode um so you have consistent pay and you have mm-hmm. uh, your character grows and the writing grows with you uh and then for theater if there were a consistent thing it would probably be broadway or something yeah. that has like a longer run longer of a run. show uh, where you can do performance after performance every night um and film it doesn't really work that way i think mm-hmm. film is more just it would be having projects that come not long after the other one. Like once one is done, you're you're starting to work on another yeah. one, that type of thing. Uh, but I mean, there's, I don't know if there's that much consistency. If you are um, a well-known person with like a brand and team mm-hmm. and uh, uh, people send you scripts and they want you in their stuff, I think that is a way to be a consistently working actor. Mm-hmm. actor uh, but that's also fame. (laughs) So that's like fame is a goal for people. Some people because of that, more people Uh, know you for whatever reason. So that's the other thing. Um, but in general, I think it's about, it's not necessarily the quantity of projects you work on, but the quality. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I find that when I have a dry spell, I'm not working a lot. Um, when I find something, even if it's a reading of something mm-hmm. that I'm working on that really moves me or I love working on it, even if it's my own writing, which I do, awesome. uh, that that can sp- inspire me and keep me going in the off moments, in yeah. the in the moments where I don't have a specific job yeah. in the creative field. I create my own or I'm a part of somebody else's that is fueling Pro- in me. In the process of yeah. being made. And that's the... Keeping the, that motor going. You're yeah, speaking of... of off seasons, off times in terms of creative fields like acting. Mm-hmm. Describe the grind. Describe the like this is the the part of this field that either is not being talked about or people don't want to talk about the five thousand auditions every week or the two hundred scripts that I did uh uh um what do you call that you submit little reel for. Um, you know, what sort of what sort of grind happens to just bridge through different, you know, projects uh, whenever there are lulls? Um, if you're talking about things people don't talk about that mm-hmm. often, I think it's the what happens to people mentally mm. when they don't get to do their creative venture, whatever that is. A lot of people who don't make their creative venture their job mm-hmm. do it regardless Mm -hmm. right like if painting isn't your day job then you just paint Mm -hmm. and it's fun and it's what inspires you but when you make it your job then it becomes a thing you have to do and then if you're not making money at it it becomes this thing that feels maybe the joy is taken out of it or the frustration gets to you once you know your passion becomes the job it's not about 
creating as much as it is about getting paid mm -hmm. to create. And that's, I think, the, the trap of any creative field. Yeah. And I think it's the trap of acting as well, is we all fell in love with it because we like to play pretend and play dress up and be different characters. I mean, when I was a, a little kid, I did a show where I got to be like this kid who was an asshole mm. and I loved it. And then she changes at the end of the play. She she's, has like realizations and she's not a, and you know, she's a traumatized kid. But like, mm. I found that amazing. I found it so much fun because I didn't get to act like that in my real life. Mm. And if I did, I was punished. Um, That's so on true. stage, I got to yell and scream and and I got to exercise all this stuff mm. that was inside me um, as different people. And then when I made it into a job, uh, I found that it was, it became, yeah, much more of a grind of like trying to get someone to hire me to mm -hmm. do those things. Uh, but there, we don't talk enough about ways in which we can make that happen for ourselves on a daily basis, right? Good call. Doing, doing auditions, or if you don't have an audition, putting yourself on tape anyways, mm -hmm. memorizing a thing, practicing every day. It doesn't feel as, maybe it's fun to do uh -huh. that for yourself as an audience, but uh, sometimes it's necessary because yeah. it keeps fueling you in the times where no one's hiring you to do it. You just do it for yourself yeah. or you do it for your dog or you do it for your friends or you write something and you do it, that type of thing. No, that's, it, it's very important to know. It's the idea of your reps is not something you just do when there are good things happening, right? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, an audience makes it, at the end, but what happens when you don't have that audience? Exactly, and and again, the, you know, if you don't know when your next play or film or TV sh uh, 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 show is going to happen, you don't want your blades to be dull. You always want to like, you know, yeah. make tapes, memorize lines. I didn't even realize that. Like, you know, it is a muscle. So if you're not reading and memorizing stuff, what if you have like, hey, here's. You know, you're going to be a, 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 you're understudying for this and, you know, if they drop out real quick and then you have to memorize a full play. And we haven't you know, memorized that, something in a while. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's awesome. Um, well, speaking of, you know, that grind, what is, uh, what is a Jenna day look like? All right. So let's do a Jenna day that is busier. Hmm. And then what is okay. a chill Jenna day that is for Jenna? I mean, we could talk pre and post pandemic too, uh, but uh, a busy day for me would look like, here, let's do a, a busy day where I'm actually engaged in my craft uh -huh. would look like uh, getting up, walking the dog, uh, doing a self tape usually these days. I rarely audition in person um, right now, but uh, putting something on tape, having either a friend come over, going over a friend's house, or having someone Zoom with me to help me out. Um, and then going to either an acting class or a project I'm a part of, a reading, or my writing group, because I write oh. as well. Uh, and then, yeah, either going to work after that or home back home to walk the dog again. <laughs> uh, and, and or seeing someone's film or someone else's reading mm. or someone's play at the end of the night, right? That would be like a full day of doing acting stuff. A busy day not doing that would be getting up, walking the dog, working out, um, so making working lunch. Out. Exercise? I try, I try. Yeah. Like that's like a few days a week, it's not every day. Um, I should do it more, but, um, and then work. And when I work the bar, it's really long hours, so you yeah. like 12 hour shifts. Um, and then that's it, that's the end of the day. That's it. That's, that's the weird thing, That's that's even like, craft and then the day they're both long they're both a lot of stuff well it's yeah it's two jobs yeah. when you're when you're engaged when mm. i'm engaged in acting it's uh it's another job yeah uh oh i forgot about the part where i spend sometimes hours in the morning sending emails or following up with things applying to auditions whether you have representation or not mm. you still have to be on top of your stuff which there's another thing that no one talks about. It's the it's really hard to be a self starter. It's hard to manage yourself when you don't have a manager. Even if you do have one, it's hard to manage yourself. Yeah. Um, when you're not in school anymore, no one's telling you what to exactly. do. Exactly. Um, you have to do it for yourself. And if you're not organized, uh, <laughs> or disciplined, um, it is really hard to get that ball rolling and keep it rolling. Cause it's easy to get it rolling when you're motivated. Yeah. And then that motivation fades. 
and you got to keep it going. Yeah, it's it's the admin part of anything. Like it doesn't matter if it's acting, if it's a day job, or if you're just like maintaining your apartment. There are yeah. certain things where like looking at your pantry to see what's in stock or not. What, what you, you need, need to more of. Well, get, or setting up some time to clean, do laundry. Uh, those kind of like ladder up. You know, you have life admin, you have passion admin, you passion have work admin. admin, and then those need to be kind of like organized. And like I yeah. mentioned, if you're not organized, you know, something's gonna get like either you don't you don't do enough of the things to keep your passion rolling, or you forget to do laundry for the week, which I kind of usually do sometimes. Yes, me too. Yeah, but yeah, I have organization issues at times, so it's that's been a that's been a curve for me as an adult learning curve is to organize my life so that I can be on top of my emails and be on top of the career stuff that's not as fun. Mm -hmm. So we've talked a little bit about your your acting and it's blossoming. Uh, we can't wait to see you in more projects. Let's talk a little bit about the art modeling stuff. Yeah. Right. So it's, you know, it supplements the income because, you know, bartending, acting, those might be, uh, you know, not as uh, uh, revenue generating as others so what got you into art modeling on a whim a friend was doing it and i was interested and so i applied and i got a job doing it just for a few shifts like every every month but i found it really sort of talking about supplementing your creative life uh -huh. with other ventures and stuff like writing or doing your own like creating your own things i found that art modeling was another fun supplement for me Same. Uh, it was a way to exercise my body um, in kind of using some of the training that I'd received actually and it was a way to express myself in a f specific format and a way to help others with their artistic that, process exactly. which was a huge benefit because I was able to see how my presence and what I was bringing to mm -hmm. the table was helping others with their art Yeah, and, so. and that's the, the, the thing that I've heard about when my other friends do some, uh, you know, figure art modeling. Um, one, it's not as easy as it seems. Is you're not just like sitting Hanging there, out. you yeah. know, uh, you're not a statue for w how long would be a, a, a session? Like two, three hours? Yeah, three hours. Um, somewhere between two to four hours. And each pose will last about 20 minutes. And sometimes you come back to the same pose. Mm -hmm. So it can be hours or days of the same pose just in 20 minute segments intense oh and b before we get for the people that don't know what art modeling is describe what an art model would do and how the class is kind of like structured uh, art modeling is it's often nude mm -hmm. for figure drawing classes so people can uh, practice sketching the nude form which you know the idea behind that is that the human form is one of the hardest things to 100%. capture uh and sometimes it's closed as well uh but often nude and you will you yeah. will uh sure, come. come on whiskey join join the podcast on, whiskey let's come go on. there you go yeah special guest uh um, and she shows the butt <laughs> <laughs> you will uh sit in the or sit stand or lie down it depends um if it's a short pose mm -hmm. you do more action gestures tension poses that you don't have to hold for uh -huh. that long if it's a longer pose you'd be more something that you could settle into that you can maybe a lean or a seat into. yeah something where maybe your weight is evenly or somewhat evenly distributed uh -huh. um i've i've often found myself bye uh i've often found myself in poses that were very ambitious where you know 20 minutes in, i'm like ah oh, that i wow yeah. wish i didn't do that uh -huh. and that's gonna be another two hours um, yeah, people yeah. think that 20 minutes, that's nothing. It, if it's a compromising position, it might hurt. Yes, and also if it, you have to do it over and over again, sometimes your feet fall asleep or whatever. Mm. But it's all a learning curve, learning experience, and that's mm. especially something that happens when you're new. Yeah. You don't, you know, you put your arms above your head and you're like, oh, that's, I shouldn't do that for a for five minute pose <laughs> or something. True. You know what I mean? Like, uh, or a 10 minute pose. Um, but yeah, and it's the, People will, some people will try and draw you accurately and other people will um, draw based on their artistic needs yeah. and what they see, what their visions are mm -hmm. for their art. Um, it's sort of 
up to everyone to yeah. do what they want. Uh, and yeah, that's you know the the uh, figure art modeling. It's mostly nude for the artistry of it, but again, it's physiologically. There's so many things that you know we can't see in in pictures that you need to see in real life, particularly if you're an artist trying to draw something like that, where how joints and muscles are connected with each other, the proportions. Yeah. I mean, cetera. if you want to get really scientific about it, you could look up. Uh, if you're an artist or if you're a model or just anybody you can look up um how the what connects to what mm -hmm. what muscles connect to what muscles yeah. what joints connect to what joints um because everything is just sort of the same few shapes yep. just variations mm -hmm. on the same few shape um and it's the same with fingers toes yep. uh, leg muscles arms everything yep. is connected um and there are tricks yep. to how to draw the human and, body and more accurately as well yeah, for for serious artists like yeah you know live drawing is you know part of the training because yeah, you know, there's a lot of things that you cannot see either in video or in photos if you're gonna copy something or if you're building your drawing from or painting from your imagination it's, yeah. it's different you want to see you know real flesh react to how the seat kind of like folds the skin how a certain pose moves how the light thing, bounces how... and also you're never fully um you're never fully still yeah. uh, it's not like drawing something that doesn't move because the human body is always somewhat in motion that's, and that's a good call breathing and yeah. twitching and then when it um they come back to that pose it's always slightly different so you are really you're trying to draw as accurately as possible and as well as using your own knowledge of the yeah. human body yeah and also hopefully it trains you to sketch out plan out imprint in your brain a little quicker because again mm -hmm. you know poses you're not going to be in one pose for f the full four hours you artists know, who right. study animation actually can draw um the gesture of the pose the 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 weight distribution mm -hmm. and like sort of the way the body is angling itself very quickly yeah. they can do it like that because they're trained to do it like that right. that's so, crazy yeah so yeah that's fascinating how you know yeah i love talking about how how people weirdly you know, like you do one job so that you can do the other one yeah right? it's 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 so wild it's like it, when I, I was growing up that that sounds so western where like i'm doing this job so i can act which means i could i need to do one job to do the other job yeah. which is uh you know something that i i always want to kind of like absorb from other people and share because like i do not have that commitment I, if 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 my if the things that I call passion gets hard, I stop. All right, that's why I'm never gonna be a full time photographer. No, no. If the project, if I don't like the project, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> okay, valid. <laughs> it's like if the, it's it, you know. But if I need money and I don't have, I don't do projects. That's gonna be a problem. So yeah. I do the day job so that I can, you know, cherry pick the projects that I want. And it's just everybody has a a a. A variety of of ways to be able to kind of like power the things that makes them happy yeah. and speaking of which we just got off our little fun shoot mm -hmm. amazing portraits some of my most favorite and this is still somewhat of like a, a photography podcast um, you know we always want to give some some tips and tricks and lessons through real world experience on how to collaborate better with you know other photographers other um, you know, artists like painters and sketchers, like you know what you do in art modeling. What makes a good collab session, photo shoot, or if you're like posing for a a um, a sketch or drawing, um, or even like a, in your case, being an actor, like what makes a good uh, reading line sessions? Um, I mean, are we talking for photography session? Yeah, yeah sure. I feel like what makes a good photography session is having fun uh, and a good communication between the photographer and the, the model. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, there needs to be, there, it just needs to be clear what the photographer wants, mm. what they're going for. It's kind of like that on set as well. Yeah. Like I, I find I can be freer when I know what the hell's going on. Got it. So if, if we're in a medium shot, a wide, a close up, um, if you know the director is on a time limit, I just like to know those things so I can adjust. Perfect. Um, 
what I'm doing or I, I realize, oh, I don't have to be so big or so small or whatever it is. I, um, or I know that I need to like, I mean, I'll always give a hundred percent, but you know, I have like some, something in my mind, sort of like on stage being like, you have to, you know, you're on a time queue. So you have to get off the stage in this amount of time or whatever. Um, and it's, it's like that with photography, but mostly play, mostly play. just because I feel like the best photos are the in-betweens, right? 100%. Like posing is fun, mm -hmm. but usually my favorite photos are candid yeah. or, or the ones that you weren't expecting to catch. Exactly. And that's the, the thing, too, is like um, every every creative, you know, particularly photographers and videographers, we're all in various stages of learning new skills and tricks and we might have things that we think works for one person and some but might not work again these are people there's so many variables in terms of like yeah we want it to be fun and comfortable but if you don't know the person it's going to be a little bit more difficult compared to somebody that you already know yeah but i love the tip of you know being articulating the direction right at the very least you know if they are subjects in some form they are either have already done it before or prepared to do certain stuff so give them the the boundaries like all right we're it's you know we're gonna do five minutes this is the look that i'm going for it's close up wide shot and then expect them to have to bring something at least to the table so that you could create yourself that's yeah. it's it's good tip like you know i sometimes forget yeah i have my my template this is how i shoot but it's not you know it works for most but sometimes like uh and we were shooting like i shoot in eights for the people that have been watching all of the behind the seats it gives my camera a little bit time to cool down because it's big and it's slow i also have time to like review the shots have your subject review the shots but there's a lot of people that don't like it because like you know eight is not enough to get into a group so now we can both adjust so yeah. i know it's like oh okay shoot a little bit longer a little bit slower and then okay awesome um uh, that good tips on how to collaborate particularly in photo shoots is there any particular image that you are like favorite inspired by something that comes to mind um uh and and why like why why that image uh so i had two i had the that famous one from the national geographic of the afghan girl afghan girl um Very nice. but that one two for two reasons one is because it's so controversial because of the idea of our uh, taking photographs of um people without their consent 100 percent, and also um and like what that means and also uh of people in really hard situations mm -hmm. and what's the duty of the photographer yeah. especially when you're in that type of a situation um so that's one because i think it just brings up a lot of conversation yep. and i'm mm -hmm. very interested in those conversations um and the other reason i like it is because um or the other reason it comes to mind right away is because uh i'm obsessed with people's faces and their eyes interesting uh, that that's yeah it's uh, it's iconic for a reason right? yeah and when and yeah, when I, so I do the modeling, but I started taking some drawing classes as mm -hmm. well through that. And awesome. what I realize is when I'm drawing, I immediately eventually settle on just trying to perfect the face and get the expression yeah, right, which a lot, I think a lot of people avoid. It depends. Some people yeah. avoid the face and they really go for like getting the um, proportions of the, the body. Yeah. And other people um, sort of give up halfway <laughs> on doing the whole, the whole body, and that's kind of me. I, I really um, am interested in faces, and Portraiture. that makes sense as an actor. Mm -hmm. Why I'm so focused on getting expressions, um, and so focused on getting this idiosyncrasies and the nuances of someone's face. Um, but yeah, faces and eyes yeah. are really fascinating to me. Most really expressive, attractive. yeah. yeah. So and it's my medium, so that makes sense to me. It's it's something that. Um, some of my favorite actors have really wild colored uh -huh. eyes or expressive eyes uh, or faces that are out of the norm, mm -hmm. I would say, uh, that are really expressive. Yeah, and, and you know, it's not lost, at least on me in our conversation, that 
this is how I know that you are in your field. Like you found your passion because you said that like, you're an actor, but you do your own writing, mm -hmm. right? So it always, you know, getting the upstream or downstream of the particular field um, just gives you a lot more context on what's good like, right? You know, a lot of a lot of great actors can just be great actors, but the ones that, um, but we could always see that the ones that are super duper invested is not just acting, they dabble in directing, they dabble in writing, they dabble in whatever. And then not only are you an art model, but now you're doing drawing classes too. I mean, right? at the end of it, I think we all just like to create. That's true, right? Well, and we're better at some forms of creation than others, sure. I suppose, but yeah. Yeah, my creation is uh, chicken nuggets, instant ramen. No, love it. <laughs> Wait, no. can I talk about one more photo that please, I really like? Please, please. Okay, uh, the other one that came to mind outside of like the traditional famous, everybody knows this photo, is there's a photo that was taken of my mom and I at oh. a wedding. Um, I'll send it to you. Yes, uh, I'm going to post it somewhere here. Yes, and it is one of my favorite photos that's ever, and I don't even remember who the photographer was, I have to go find out. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of my favorite photos ever taken of me and my mom because we're just having a blast dancing. That's awesome. And my mom dances all the time. I could send you her Instagram. She's dancing on it right now. She takes videos of herself. She's in her 70s and she's dancing. Um, I don't my mom was dance. a dancer a long time ago before she had me and she loves to dance and it's her awesome. passion. That's her creative venture um, that she does not do for money and never did, but just loves it. And she i'm not as comfortable i like to dance but i'm not as comfortable in my body as she okay. is and so i just love it because we both look like we're having so much fun awesome. and we're just wildly in the moment and i you know w one day when she's not here or one day when she can't dance anymore like i will or vice versa when i can't <laughs> hopefully i will still have it and i can look back on that photo and remember just us having a really good yeah. time I, I can't wait to see it. And, you know, I, I love talking about people's favorite images, again, because that's my thing. Photography is my thing. But I love the various answers of, you know, you know some of, of the previous guests is like, oh, this the shot that I took or mm -hmm. was taken of me because, you know, either the light is great technically or it was associated with a certain project, whatnot. But also there's the other camp where it's just memorable, like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a great memory, great memories or even oh, inspirations. Like one of my friends posts, she says, like, uh, it's a Dolly Parton photo because like, yeah, because I like Dolly Parton. It's like, yeah, that's that's the point of art. It's like it doesn't matter what you yeah. think it is, what makes you feel. And it's always great also if the feeling is associated with people that you love particularly family because again you can't choose your family so if you have a good one that's kind of like a, a blessing and all well that's awesome well thank you for for sharing and thank you for like telling us a little bit about like your process on on i i, I like putting on record how there's so many things that happens behind the scenes with anything and you know if you really want to venture as an actor as a model hey there's it's two, three jobs. It's, you know, yep. hey, maybe you'll strike gold and become a TikTok star or whatever. But for the most you part... To, I'd have to get a TikTok first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but, you know, for the most part, it's like, again, yeah, it's it's self-tapes. It's memorizing. It's going to other people's shows. Mm -hmm. It's writing. It's drawing. So that's pretty amazing. Engaging in the thing that you love. Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, I've learned a lot. Uh, I am now even more... Uh, thankful every time that I sit across the bar and get my favorite I pay from you and I bring all my softball friends to Adirondack. Amazing. Uh, but before we close out, um, tell tell the people where people can find you. Okay, so for my acting stuff on Instagram, I'm Jenna Kra, J-E-N-N-A-K-R-A. -N -N Art modeling is Jenna Repose, J-E-N-N-A r-e-p-o-s-e -E. and in general you can look up jennacrasowski.com and find out what random stuff i'm involved in it's always random <laughs> it's it just comes up that's another thing about the field is there will always be more yeah i, I mean it always it doesn't it feel, doesn't ever feel like that it always feels like your last job is your last job uh -huh. but 
there will always be more if you want to keep doing it. It's just a weird dichotomy of saying like it's so hard to break through, it's so hard to get X, Y, Z, but there's always art being made. Yeah, always. And, and and you can make it. And you can make it yourself too. So hey, it might not be the uh, four season Netflix show that right you're might not dream- be worth like millions of dollars, but you can make it. You can make it, right? And people will watch it, mm-hmm. right? Like me, JennaKosowski dot com. Um, Jenna, thank you. You are the best. Thank you. This is great. Like I can't wait to like uh, use some of our shots from this session as the thumbnail of this episode. Maybe if you guys are nice, I'll put one or two photos of that. It's great. Some of my favorite portraits, and it was super easy. We knocked everything out in like 50 minutes. Happy uh, to do it. It's great. I so, love your shots. No, I love you, and thank you very much. Uh, again, for those who haven't subscribed to the channel yet, uh, the Fun Shoot Podcast, is some, it drops monthly. So I always bring uh, a friend, an acquaintance, a colleague talk about again the process of creativity and artistry um these are different forms of light shapers and image makers uh and we are all that we're all making something so if you're passionate about something hopefully you learn something about some of my friends that have been uh interviewed here uh also subscribe to the youtube channel uh, youtube.com slash el um uh, we have uh I'm looking at my counter right now. We're almost at 22,000 subscribers, which is kind of wild. I have n- no idea how it got that big, but thank you very much. Um, I, I strategically product placed some of the people that have been sending me so many things. So thank you very much. I promise I'm going to make those reviews soon. <laughs> uh, uh, but come back to the channel, support all of the people uh, that you know are on the channel a lot of them are performers go to their shows um, look at Jenna's uh, website shows lots of projects coming down swing by Adirondack grab a drink tip heavily and we're all gonna have <laughs> such a great great time tip <laughs> have, tip your service workers people it's a tough job I don't that's why I will never do service because I just can't stand that long I can barely stand for five minutes. They're going to make me stand for a full shift and subscribe. I'll sit down. So, uh, again, thank you. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next month with another one of the Fun Shift Podcast episodes.